Hi, my name is Gabriel. This is Devotionals, Brief Devotions for Busy People. Today we finalize our series as we have traveled through this book together, Jesus' Final Week, by Pastor Bill Cook. He's our pastor here at Ninth and O. And I cannot commend this book more highly to you than I don't know what words I come up with. I was so blessed reading through it. My faith was encouraged. I love Jesus more. And that's the effect of <laughs> Pastor Bill upon my life. And we praise God for him. As we consider the resurrection, there is no greater event in history. In fact, all of Christianity is based upon this event. It is the event that changed the world. For if Jesus had merely died and nothing else, you and I would still be hopeless. Yet Jesus is raised from the dead on the third day. He leaves the grave triumphantly as the victor, the conquering king, and he has overcome Satan, sin, and death. That you and I and whoever puts their trust in him never has to fear death. We can be brought from death to life, made new in Jesus. I want us to go to the account of Luke found in Luke 24. And there's one particular sentence I want us to, to put our attention toward today. It's in verse 5. The angels, so they, the women go to the tomb. They find that the, the stone has been rolled away. Again, this, they, they, the angels weren't doing this to let Jesus out, but to let the women and to let the, us, by extension of reading these words, see in to an empty tomb. Jesus is not there. And notice these words. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus is alive. And so many times we look Jesus is the author of life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That's how the prologue of John starts. We know this, and yet, before we know Jesus, and sometimes even after, we revert back to looking for life, looking for things that will satisfy everywhere but to God. I want to encourage us to not look anywhere else, but to look here, look at the cross, look at the empty tomb, look to the throne, cry out to God, you alone have life. And if all who will look to Jesus in faith, believing that He is the Son of God, you will have life in His name. And that's the only way we can have life. It's not through religion. There's so many religions, everybody trying to strive to make their way to God. Or by, let me just do better. Well, you can do better and be dead in your trespasses of sin. You need a new heart. I need a new heart. And it only comes through the work and person of Jesus Christ who established and uh, through redemption this new covenant for us. And so we need to stop looking for life among these dead things. And don't look for Jesus. He's, he's alive. You can't look for Him in any other way but through by faith by seeing the empty tomb and coming to the conclusion through all the evidence that we have, and the evidence is absolutely overwhelming, Jesus Christ raised bodily from the dead. These weren't mere hallucinations or visions. There was no stealing of the body. This was not a report that we know through Scripture that said that uh, the, the, the guards and the, the Jewish leaders made up the story that the disciples came and stole the body. For me, one of the, the greatest evidences is the fact that these men who were once cowering in fear, locked in a locked upper room, waiting for their own executions, having followed Jesus of Nazareth, and yet now they see Jesus having been raised from the dead, and they are bold, and they go and proclaim this message around the world as the Lord Jesus has told them to do. And you and I, what should our response be? Is we look to Jesus by faith. We see the empty tomb and we believe. We repent from our own sins and turn from living for our own selves. Turn from looking for life in all the wrong places and all the dead things. Jesus alone has life and He freely will give it to all who look to Him in faith. And then we, we obey. We worship. That's the appropriate, the appropriate response. The proper response. Worship, obedience, to go into all the world to share this message. This is what Christ has done for me. I was once dead, but I found life in Him, and He gives, wants to give you life as well. And so I pray today that you might examine the Scriptures. You'll read over the Gospel accounts and know that Jesus is alive. 
and He offers you life. Life now, abundant life and eternal life to come. And we do this when we go out to all the world and we tell people Jesus is life and He wants to give you life. I pray that this, heart, this message will stir your heart today that Jesus is alive. <music>